it's like the shoe keeps dropping. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just, yeah. just <laughs> yay for CP. Yeah. You know, we, you know, Marcy, we were, yes. Well, I wanted to make a comment, which is it's so interesting, this feeling that there are two things going on. Um, part of me just wants to mourn RBG. Um, oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> She's so wonderful. And then part of me is completely unable to focus on that because I'm so focused on what does this mean for the country. And they're kind of dueling perspectives right now. So that's it. Thanks, Carrie. And you know what? What the fuck? Let's, let's, it, it is maddening that we all anticipated shit to happen. We all anticipated things getting worse and worse and worse. And this was not the worst that was on my worst list. It wasn't. And, you know, I didn't really have time to, to process it. And then your emotions right now just kind of made it all real again. Um, and yeah, I, Ty, why? Why wasn't it someone else that we got the bad news from today? Why couldn't it have been somebody on the other side that were headlined that they passed? Why did it have to be her? Um, and too often, because the good ones are so damn good, their loss just is so much more heavier. It's so much more heavier because they're that good. And we need more of them and that goodness sprinkled across society more than ever now. I'd like to uh, say something, uh, Darcy, on this. I think, first of all, um, this this is Rich Cohen. We need to mourn Justice Ginsburg and give her the full credit for what she deserves as a hero in the uh, history of the United States for what she's done as a litigator and as a justice. Uh, she's a remarkable woman and a brilliant woman and a brilliant legal mind. I have some different political thoughts about this, thinking about it. I think this may be the worst thing that has ever happened to Donald Trump in his election, re-election campaign. Because the problem about judges and Supreme Court justices is that the right has used this as a primary motivation politically for years, and the left hasn't. And this is a slap in the face to the left to get your ass out and vote. And that's going to happen. I, I see no, no reason that that wouldn't happen. Lindsey Graham said in 2018 that, and he's the chair of the Judiciary Committee. So whatever McConnell says, Graham took a position publicly that if there was an opening on the Supreme Court before the election, that it should wait until the next president. If he then goes the other way, I think it, it, it's going to really hurt him in South Carolina, where the last poll I saw was a 48-48 tie between him and his Democratic opponent. So there's that issue. I think there's a real good chance that there will not be an attempt or an opportunity to replace Justice Ginsburg during the time between now and the election. I really worry about the lame duck session, though, if Biden wins and what, if anything, the, uh, the Republicans would do. And it's just a, uh, a major hypocritical uh, move if they do, do decide to go forward. So my, my thoughts are mourning Justice Ginsburg, it, it really goes to my heart that she is, is passed. But I can't help but uh, you know try to look at the uh, 
the political implications of what happens next. And I guess there's only one other issue that really concerns me is what if the Supreme Court gets to decide the election, post-election, uh, if there's, you know, a uh, Bush v. Gore kind of issue before the Supreme Court, and now we've lost a liberal justice on the Supreme Court. That scares me, too. So that's, you know, one more thing we can all worry about. Um, I think bottom line, uh, this just motivates everybody to uh, get out there and work as hard as we can to get Biden elected and to get the Senate to flip. That Those are the two, you know, key issues, and uh, we all know what we have to do for that. So I'll just take a little time. Um, out of respect for Justice Ginsburg, it seems to me that uh, what I'd like to do for myself, and I would invite everybody else to do it too, is imagine what she would say to you right now. What would she ask of us? How would she ask, how would she invite us to go forward? And with what Richard said about having some respect about her passing, I totally agree with that. But then what would she say to me? And that will keep me centered. Hey. Am I, am I unmuted? Okay. Yeah. So I want to speak to the to the men that are on this call right now. Um, I respect the analysis. I, I love um, the input. And some of you have I've done work with. Um, and I want you to stay a part of this community. And I think we need to save the male analysis for later in this call. And I think we need to give the women a chance to speak with their emotion and to recognize who she was. We will have many hours and days and weeks to talk about what to do, what the political implications are. Um, but we need to feel this, we need to mourn and as men, we need to move out of the way right now with all due respect, gentlemen. Larcy. Thanks, Charles. You know, I, I want to hear from, uh, yeah, I, I want to hear from you all. I, I'm very, I still consider myself very new to the engagement of the political sphere. Um, I'm doing a lot of research and, and education on, on, on for myself just to, to, to get up to speed with a lot of stuff. But many, many of you out there have done this work prior to me even coming into this country. So I would love to hear your sentiments, the memories that you have in your work as activists, as sheroes, and the memories that you have of her being the dynamite woman that she was, is, um, I want to channel all of that and I want to be, I want to be there with you. So I welcome any memory. I welcome any of that from, from, from the women that are joining us today. I, I could say something. Um, I All week I've been calling, making phone calls to Iowa and Georgia and Florida. And um, today was a day I had with my granddaughter and my, who's two and a half. And so my daughter-in-law doesn't like me to 
be on the phone with when the, she's around me. So at the end of the day, after she left, I looked at my phone and I got uh, happy Rosh Hashanah because tonight is the first night of the Jewish New Year. And then I saw RGB and it was like a slap in the face, you know, I just being Jewish and obviously Ruth, Ruth was also Jewish, you know, that she died actually last year. It's a new year starting sundown in the Jewish religion. So I thought, is that it? Is that the end of the bad stuff that's going to happen in, to us? <laughs> you know, is it a new beginning? Is she going to spur us on to the next thing and push our way through this horrible stuff that we've been through in the last, you know, four years? Um, when I, I was in, um, in a show, uh, I'm an artist, and I was in a show in March that opened in March in honor of her birthday, March 15th, and it was supposed to be Ruth Bader Ginsburg as a, as a superhero. Of course, I had done a print for the 2017 Women's March, and uh, which, you know, of her, and um, so I put that in, and it wasn't as a superhero, but to me, she's a superhero without having to have a cape and whatever. Um, and so there was a show of a bunch of artists who were in that show. Of course, then it closed down before it opened because of the COVID. So I don't know if anyone ever saw that show. And I still have to go pick up my print from the show six months later, but. She was certainly my hero, my Shiro. So that's all I have to say. Thanks, Lori. That's beautiful. Um, I think Teresa had her hand up. If you wanted to go on mute, Teresa. Okay. I saw an email with the headline, and my first thought was no. And I was sad. I'm scared. I think the next uh, few months are going to be even crazier than they were already going to be. But my thought was tonight is for mourning and tomorrow is for acting. And I made a little still life with my, my new mug. And I feel like tonight I was, I was really grateful that uh, Common Power offered this opportunity to come together in community and just know that we are all together and we mourn together and tomorrow we act together and we redouble all of our efforts. I think that's what Ruth Bader Ginsburg would ask of me. Uh, but tonight, you know, I've reached out to old law school friends. I have reached out to other friends. We are all together in mourning. And tomorrow is for action. Thanks, Teresa. I, 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 I appreciate that. And I, I can echo those sentiments. I, I want to mourn because it is, it is a loss, but I also feel really determined in to, to honor her and to honor the work and to honor everyone's work to fight for what we're fighting for. And, and I feel like I can mourn at the same time as acting. I can, I can carry those heavy emotions as, as, my, as my compass almost to to continue to continue on and, and do the work. All right. Um, if you've raised your hand, I do apologize. I am not seeing the names on my screen. So please just go ahead and take yourself off of mute. This is Andrea. Thanks. Go ahead. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, Charles, thank you for what you said. Uh, I was about to hang up. Um, it's very hard to um, skip a step or two because um, we're all so scared. But I, um, I just wanted to say that to me, she's not just a symbol or an icon. 
but she had this story and a real, mm. and she died of cancer. Um, and, you know, this um, tendency that we have, I think, to just turn people into two dimensional figures and not really take a minute. It, it, it's, it's very, it's a sick thing. I, I really want us to, no matter what's happening in the external world, we're humans. And I want to be a human right now. And, um, and yeah, she's, she's my hero. And I'm just so upset and it's important and it matters and it's gonna help me. You know, it's gonna help other people if I stay in this rather than go on and start telling people, you know, wh whatever the heck strategies and tactics, we, we got that. Um, but right now she's a human being who has changed the world. And there are people who are alive because of her. There are people who had their entire life trajectory changed. There are people who are loving families because of her. There are people who are in law, you know, went to law school and pursued civil rights, you know, lives because of her inspiration. And then there's just a lot of women who got to see an example of what a, a, a person who is tiny and and demure um, and happens to be female is, is a badass, you know? So whatever we grew up with, and I'm, I was born in 1964, I did not have that. Um, and so, you know, for me, you know, she's a Jewish woman. There's a lot of things about her life experience that were absolutely, completely unlikely. Um, one of which was that she was married to a man who knew how to be a man standing by a great woman. Um, so, so the idea of their story and, and what he helped her um, accomplish in this world and what it meant to parent a child while you were changing the world. I mean, you know, Marcy, you're doing that. Uh, you know, we've been, we've been doing that. So, so those are all really important things. I just want a minute um, to just sit with that and to say thank you. Um, because we just do that. We keep blowing past this stuff. <laughs> I'm like, just a minute. I know, I know the world's ending right now and we're all upset, but, but I, I want a minute to just think about this human being and this great woman and all the people who don't even know that she changed their life. Hi. Um, hi, this is... Th thank you for that. And I wanted to thank, um, thank you all for hosting this. I just have a short comment. The hardest thing I did today was to tell my daughter, my 22 year old daughter, she hadn't heard yet. And it, it, she was, uh, it was very hard because she is trying to stay optimistic about the future and what's, what's ahead. So thank you for, your, for this opportunity. And um, uh, it's, and, and, and sharing this. That's all I have to say. I'm going to jump in and say uh, I appreciate David and Charles uh, allowing us to come together tonight. I think it's important. Uh, some of us want to pause for a minute and uh, just live with the fact that we lost a, a marvelous woman uh, uh, in this country. Uh, she was marvelous for me, but she was marvelous for my nieces and uh, all the daughters that I know paid attention to what she accomplished and how she did it and how she continued to do it to her last moments. Uh, so there seems to be those who want to get right into action, and I understand that. I know we will. Uh, and with Ruth in mind, Ruth, I said, with Justice Ginsburg in mind, uh, I know I'm confident we will. My, there was one gentleman who said, um, what would she be asking us of, of us? And I have to say, my question is, we're being tested in 2020 in a way we've never been tested before. And uh, I don't wanna lose uh, my understanding of the humanity we need to have in this country uh, and respect for individuals and honoring them at appropriate times. So the pausing for me right now is, as we go forward and struggle, uh, let's remember uh, 
the relationships we have with people and the respect we have and, uh, and honor each other. So that's kind of where I am is, uh, is this test, she's gonna take us through the end of the year, uh, uh, incredible struggle. And how do we want to perform? Uh, who do we want to be? How do we honor uh, Justice Ginsburg in the process? So that's where I am tonight. Thanks. Um, I'd like to say something. My, my name is Deborah Daniels and I'm a retired lawyer and um, my daughter is in law school right now. And I think I owe a lot of what I have been able to do with my life um, to Justice Ginsburg and my daughter's, I think, been inspired by her. Um, the thing that I, I've been talking to law school friends tonight and campaign friends from Kansas. And what we've, some of them said, you know, I don't, I don't think I can face any more of this, but what, um, what I, I've been angry for five years that this poor woman hasn't been able to put down her burden. And so for me, I keep thinking she, she did not give up. She gave out and it is up to us to continue to not give up uh, and to go until we can't go anymore. And I think that's, um, I think that's part of what's holding me. I was going to take tonight off and not talk to anyone anymore until I saw this, um, <laughs> until I saw this uh, meeting called. And I wanna thank everybody for being here. It's, um, it's such a tough moment and at some point, somebody's going to call. Um, is going to call for a minute of silence, perhaps, where we can all hold our breath together and do that. And I would appreciate somebody taking charge of that. So, and, and it's been called before, but thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Go ahead. Sorry. No. Um, I wasn't sure about attending this uh, for a variety of reasons, but the community and souls of like-minded people is really powerful. And um, to begin the new year with Shana with this group of activists who have big and good hearts and will be as fierce as RBJ is important. I know what infused her, infuses many of us, even if you're not Jewish, it's tikkun olam, which means repair the world. And I think what hurts us so much is the harm done to so many others um, who are not us. And I think it's what kept um, justice Ginsburg alive, her fierceness to leave a better world, her fierceness to, with, as Teresa said, her last blessed breath, um, do good. I have wondered why we have not gone to the streets, safely of course, uh, and I think now is the time to show that we are, we are her, um, all our ages, all our genders, all our faces, all our heights, we are her and we can call the Senate, call all senators and we can stand as women in India did, a million of them, this is pre-pandemic, in I believe it was the state of Tamil Nadu, stand together and hold distant hands and say, she will not be replaced until we say so. And that does, as I'm talking, echo what was said in the march in Charlottesville when they screamed, Jews will not replace us. So tap into your outer and your inner fierceness, mourn her, as we are, but action is mourning. And um, 
I thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thanks, Arlene. That was beautiful. Um, I think I think now, I think it's 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 a good time for us to have just a, a quiet time to honor her. Um, so if we can just take a moment of silence, channel every bit of memory you have of her and the words that are coming to you as we're processing this together. Um, so we can just have a moment of silence for, for Judge Ginsburg. Thank you for participating in that. Um, there are a few people that have raised their hands. I want to give them time to, to share in thought. Uh, Judith, are you still with us? I already commented. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So I want to, I want to also, I want to put into focus September here. She has, I bought this shirt for her before she was born because I knew this fall we would be doing pre-COVID, we were going to be doing get out the vote efforts. I was, I had great plans to bring her along to do canvassing work as we traveled to Colorado. And I found this onesie that says, forget princess call me your honor and it was so fitting i just i i saw it and i i loved it and you know i did not know at all what was going to transpire but this is the first time she actually was able to fit her onesie with this and so today we we put it on and She's been so vocal all day long. So I think she is wearing it proudly for everyone tonight. Hi, this is Andrea Smith Clark. Um, I am going to say something. I wasn't going to, but I, it turns out that I am. Um, I wasn't going to come tonight because I thought I don't really belong. Unlike most of you, I have come to this really late. And I thought, well, who are you? Just another old white woman who was concerned about this. It's like, I finally came to the party. Okay. So, when a friend texted me about uh, Justice Ginsburg this afternoon, and I thought, oh no. And, and so I, uh, that was exactly the way it hit me. I just felt blown apart. So I'm happy that I came this evening to hear the rest of you and hear your thoughts. And what I can give to this is some time and a little money and I can give it some good energy. And that's what I'm going to do. Because I'm sure that uh, RBG would say above all things, do not give up. She didn't. And she attained the position she did. She uh, got her legislation uh, through and she made her decisions. And she just kept on fighting, even with her health issues. So. That, that's, that's the message I get out of this. So thank you. I'm glad you joined us, Andrea. 
Thank you for being here. So, so I really, I think, you know, there's no right or wrong way to, to process a loss. Um, and I really, I want you all to take the time that you need. Um, if it's being alone, make sure that you have a support person right away when you get out of that. Make sure that you have somebody that you can call right away to help you get to the next phase. And sometimes we get, it's, it's okay to, to, to sit, to sit and mourn and however long people need it, I think is, is, is just fine. Um, and it's quite all right. And for those that can carry that with them when they're, when they're ready to act, that's wonderful also. The point in all of this this evening was to lighten loads, to lighten burdens, and to help carry the weight of, of the shoulders of everyone that wants to, wants to push forward, wants progress. And Common Power and the volunteers that we have and this beautiful community that we have, I think, I think we do. All of us in the chat are already talking about what you're, what you're all ready to do, phone banking, you wanna donate, and that's all wonderful thing. Ow, okay, I'm so sorry. Sorry, she's attacking me. Okay, I'm sorry. I. Anyway, she wants to see all of you. I think that's why she wants her face to also be seen on this. She's very familiar with your faces too, as we're we're all seeing each other on Zoom. Um, so. We will always be here. You can count on common power. You can count on the people that lead it to, to provide the guidance, to provide the work. When you're ready, you call us. When you wanna talk a little bit more about how to help you get there, we'll be here, just call us. Um, and you know, I still want to have this space for people that want to still talk exactly. talk a little bit and process a few things that they need to for for this evening. And absolutely, we'll be here for that as well. Um, uh, for the rest of you that want to be processing on on your own, just make sure you have a support system, a support person ready to to be there with you and for you when you're ready to, um, to get going on things. That's all I ask. And if anybody needs physical beacons of hope, you're staring at the youngest member of the Common Power community. And I want you all to hug all the little people in, in your lives. This work is for them so that their future is not filled with struggles like the previous generations have done and what we need to do to clear the path that much more for progress, for equality, and 
for the betterment of, of, of our country. I want you all to hug little ones this weekend. I want you to think of the little ones this weekend. Um, if I could speak to, to Judge Ginsburg right now, I would tell her just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's probably not even enough for all the work that she's done in her lifetime, but now more than ever, a sense of determination that we can carry forward for all of us and thinking about just the little faces we have in our lives. I have been hovering over the unmute button for quite a few minutes. And I am absolutely amazed at the compassion and the foresight and the support of common power. It is such a new experience for me to be able to gather with kind and caring and compassionate and wise people um, in this manner. And so, um, once again, I am getting more and more gifts from this particular organization. And in, and in addition to the mindset and the mojo, there is compassion and there is caring for all people. And for that, Larcy and Charles and David and all of us, I say thank you, and it is a good way to end the day with friends from all over the country who are sharing in a moment of heart connection. So thank you very much. Thanks, Marty. You know, big hugs to all of you. And we cannot wait to be in person when it's safe. But from, from what I want to say to all of you is thank you for the, for the work you all have done and the batons you're all willing to pass on. There's a group of us that are ready to carry it forward because the next generation will also be ready to carry it when it's their turn to move forward. And many of you have done this work. Many of you are determined to do this work. And thank you so much for setting that example. And it makes Common Powers community of volunteers and staff members that much more of an efficient system because you all have already paved the road and thank you for doing that thank you for allowing us to lead the efforts because you made it possible and you made that easy for us We're gonna stay on, and if you wanna stay on and, and, and talk a little bit more or just 
you just need people to be around you. We will keep this on longer and don't feel pressured to stay on. If you wanted, if you have other things you need to do or wanted to go honor, honor it a different way, that's absolutely respectful and totally up to you as well. This is a community that, or this is a space that we wanted to provide for our community. You can stay, um, we'll be here. Um, and the rest of you have a wonderful weekend. We are here if you need to reach out to any of us. Um, and we're gonna do this together and, the, and, and we are gonna do, we're gonna go further because we're all doing this together. So can I say something? No. Please do. Yeah. Hello? I think you're on, Arnie. Why don't you say something? Well, what I'd like to say is that it's an old thing that when someone dies, we get together and reestablish our solidarity among us. This is especially important now that we are in a political situation where we have to make sure that we're all together, work together, fight together and hopefully win together. But the solidarity among us, working together to get this election done in the right way is very, very important and will be supported exactly by the sentiments we heard here tonight. Thank you very much for everything that was said and thought. Thank you for this meeting. Can I turn it off now? Yeah, you can leave in the bottom right here, Arnie. Thank you both for joining in our community. And I appreciate that you took the time out to be here with us. Thank you. You, you want to leave, Arnie? Oh. Thank you. You're muted. Yeah. 
I'm I'm gonna speak up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to say something that uh, might uh, give something. And that is in my experience, it's so much easier to be, you know, angry than it is sad. It's a, so much harder for me to feel the emotional gravity of what we're experiencing, really feel it. Um, than it is to t to take the the sorts of I don't know have a strategic response, fight the fight, you know, and so I appreciate others who have just said, look, you know, feel it, you know, I can tell myself to feel it, but without the presence of you all. I don't think I would get to this point in my grief so quickly. And so uh, many people have said how much they appreciate this community. And uh, I just think it, it goes beyond my wildest expectations of uh, how powerful and meaningful, you know, human connection around the things of such great importance you know how much how much it gives us <laughs> so thanks for helping me like weep <laughs> thank you for sharing that Lori. and it is quite all right we are all weeping with you um today deserves a flood of tears a hurricane of tears. That's the gravity of the emotions that are, are felt across the country and maybe the world tonight. So thank you for showing up that way, Lori. And we are all here together and, and however ways we can lighten that burden for you tonight. I know that um, that someone mentioned uh, going to the streets. I don't know how that might work, but I wish that we could. Um, I wish that we could be in the streets for several reasons. Partly, it just feels like we need a procession, um, not a not a loud march, a quiet march that that says something about how in what esteem we hold. Our Ruth, and partly because I think that it would maybe give the lie to some of the idea that the only reason that Democrats or anti-Trump people or whatever pro-democracy people are in the streets is to break things and protest and make loud noises, and that's certainly not the case in my heart, and I know in everybody's everybody, the heart of everybody here and most of the people who take to the streets. If there's going to be any uh, action that anybody finds out about in the Seattle area, I would love to hear about that or participate in that. And maybe if there's a way that we could all communicate 
about things that we find out about since it may be quiet. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just putting that out there. Hi, Terry. Thanks for joining us. Oh, you're on mute. So happy to be here. Hold on. Hey, Terry. What were your 
do you have what were what were going what was what's going through your mind and when you first heard the news? Well, it was she has carried so much on her shoulders. It's time time to rest. Time to go home and time to know that we all will take this on and carry on for her. I guess that's my thoughts. We have, um, excuse me, I'm turning off my phone. I think so many of us have looked to her to be our savior, to be our, well, our savior in so many issues. And that's, that's a lot for one person to carry on her shoulders especially for someone that's about four feet tall. Um, and knowing all her physical challenges, it's like, oh my gosh. Um, but she gave more than she needed to. And now it's up to us to take that on ourselves. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for joining us tonight. I think that's it. That's, that's, that's what we, there's, there's been a lot of those same words of understanding the role that she played in the career that she held so closely with the passion that she held so dear in the forefront of her work. And a lot of us now understand that she can rest. She, she deserves the rest. We, we acknowledge that the shared responsibility is, is, is now in our hands. And again, thank you for those that have put in their, your time and, and, and your second wind through this with common power and, how, and however you're showing up in this community with the work with, with your treasures, you're in this with us and we will go further together. And tomorrow we will act. And the next day we will act some more and channel that energy to push us towards the victory lines after this election. So thank you all for taking the time out to be with us this evening. This is not the end of this. We will have burdens to carry tomorrow and the day after that, but we will be here in community. We will provide this community. And we honor her and her legacy by acting tomorrow. I want you all to have the evening that you want to have to mourn or to be productive. That's all I ask of each and every single one of you. We love you and appreciate all the efforts you have provided this community in our organization. And we will continue to thank you tremendously as you put efforts into this work and into this community. Great job, Marcy. Thank you for hosting us. September, I miss you, girl. Daddy's over there. He's right there. Yep, that's it. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Larcy. Be safe, you too. Yep. Good night, everyone. <laughs>